playoff media day from the University of Alabama. Kicking things off will be defensive coordinator Pete Golding. Uh, Coach, our first question today will come to you from Pat Forty. Hi, Pete. Thanks for the time. Uh, my question, I, I heard from a couple people around the program that uh, Nick Saban has dispensed fewer of the proverbial ass chewings this year. I'm wondering if that's accurate. Uh, absolutely not accurate. No, <laughs> no. I mean, I think uh, obviously w whatever you do here, uh, you know, coach is going to make sure that you do it to the best of your ability and you do it the way, you know, he sees fit. Uh, which I enjoy. You know, I think that's the thing as a player, as a coach, I think you always want to know what can I do better? How can I improve? And I think a lot of times, you know, whoever you work for, whatever profession you're in, sometimes you don't get that. You don't get the feedback back and, and you don't know. So I think the good thing about him is, is black and white and you're going to know. Great. Next question will be John Zenor. John? Yeah, Pete. Um... How big of an addition was Henry Toe Toe, and and how badly did y'all maybe need a, some help and leadership at that position and play calling and all that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think uh, in any defense, especially this defense, I mean, you want your mic, your signal caller that you're kind of basing the defense around, uh, be able to get guys lined up, uh, be able to make all the calls, uh, communicate the adjustments. Um, so having the Henry having experience in a similar defense when he was at Tennessee, I think kind of put him ahead when he got here. Uh, he was familiar with a lot of the terminology, uh, you know, Pruitt using the same stuff that obviously he used when he was here. So I think that piece helped. But really, and I kind of talked about this last week, it's who Henry is. Like, it doesn't matter what he's doing. He's going to be all in uh, and he's going to be committed to it. Uh, and he's going to prepare harder than anybody else and he's going to practice harder than anybody else. Uh, and when he does that, people gravitate towards him, you know, and they want to come with him. So, you know, just you know, obviously his preparation, uh, his work ethic, his love for football, and then his intelligence. And I think he's got a great personality uh, that people want to gravitate towards, and he pulls them with him. So he's been a huge addition. I mean, not only just from a leadership standpoint and the communication, but he's been very productive as well. So uh, we'd be different without him. All right. Next will be Mike Rodak. Mike. Nick Saban had said after the, the last Georgia game that part of the success against Stetson Bennett was kind of changing the picture on him. Just what's the challenge of having to do that twice now and having a quarterback who's already seen your defense and having to call plays for another 60 minutes against him? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's tough having to play somebody twice. I mean, I know everybody talks about that and all that, but I mean, if you look at the NFL, I mean, you're playing everybody in your division twice. You know, I mean, I think the big thing is, is, and any quarterback, you know, what they see is not what they need to get every snap. And I think you're trying to make him make the decision of what coverage it is, what front is it, you know, what pressure it is once he's got the ball in his hands. And, you know, so I think the key is, you know, in a pre-snap read, you know, he thinks he's getting this look and then the ball turns over and now, now it's a different coverage or it's a different pressure or it's a different front. And then now he's got to think. You know, I think, you know, there's no difference in disguises to me on defense from the front and the coverage and all that. That, then like on offense with motions and shifts and trades, they don't put in new plays every week. You know, they're just getting to them differently. It's a different formation. It's a different shift. They're putting a guy in a different spot. So they're tweaking things, but it's, it's still what they do. It's their bread and butter. You know, so I think, you know, defensively, it's like, how can you keep things the same, but make them look different? And that way your guys have carryover. They understand the rules where if they see something new, they can let the rules apply. So, yeah, I, absolutely. It's playing the game, you know, making him think. Uh, they got a lot of weapons at a lot of different spots that create some matchup issues. Uh, they're going to move this tighter in around and try to, you know, create the matchups they want with him. Uh, they got really good backs uh, that are issued covering out of the backfield. So uh, you got to pick your poison sometime. Uh, you're not going to be able to get everybody you want doubled or the person you want on them uh, based on the formation they're in. So, you know, our guys are going to have to cover well and play well. All right. Next will be Nick Kelly. Nick. Hey, Pete. Uh, you mentioned the tight end. Yesterday, Coach Saban talked about how he's just a mismatch because, you know, he's too big and, and too fast for a lot of different guys. Um, schematically, how do you combat uh, to someone who's a mismatch like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the best thing they do is obviously the way that they move them around. Uh, they're going to still use them in the run game in the C area on or off the ball. Uh, he's going to be open and split out. 
and then he's going to bring, you know, Yang back in. So, um, you know, by putting a certain player on a certain guy all the time, then you're getting back to what y'all just said. You're telling them exactly what you're doing uh, and they know. So you got to be able to mix it up and, uh, you know, get double them sometimes and bang them, play some zone, uh, get some bigger guys on them at times. If, you know, the push off's an issue, you know, and that the speed becomes a problem, then obviously you got coverage to try to put a DB on them. But, you know, because of the run game and they're so successful in the run game as well, uh, you can't design everything to take 19 away because they're going to hurt you somewhere else. They got a lot of good players. So it's being multiple. It's having a plan, you know, for wherever he's at uh, to have things to be able to help you. Uh, but, you know, a lot of guys got him covered and a lot of guys are doubling. He still goes up and makes the play, you know, so it's about contesting it, making them execute and, and doing a good job. All right. Next will be Charlie Potter. Charlie. All right, we'll go next to Charlie Potter. Yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, we saw Kyrie Jackson, you know, play quite a bit in this past game. Just how do you think he played against Cincinnati, and how has he kind of progressed over the course of the season? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously over throughout the season, um, Kyrie understanding, you know, the concepts and the coverages and terminology and uh, the communication piece. I think anytime you're a new player in a new system, um, when things are still and they're stationary and you get a call, you're okay. When stuff starts moving around, which we're going to see every week and something changes, you know, how fast can you process that to go from one coverage to the next? Uh, I think which is a struggle for anybody, but especially a new player, a new starter. Uh, but I thought he did well. Um, obviously, there's some certain things and some mistakes that we got to clean up, you know, him as well. Uh, that'll get you beat versus a good football team that, that maybe Cincinnati didn't take advantage of. Um, but, you know, he, he competes. Um, you know, he's playing hard right now. He's got toughness. Uh, he's got the length you want at corner. Um, I think he could play the ball in the deep part of the field. I think he showed that. So uh, we just got to kind of cross the T's and dot the I's and just make sure he's locked in and knows what to do to give us our best chance. All right. Next, we'll hear from Michael Casagrande. Michael? Hey, Pete, can you take us through the, the competition uh, at Star with Brian Branch, Merrill Kai Moore? How has that dynamic played out throughout the season and where do they stand at this point? Yeah, man, they're coming to work every day. And, you know, I think it's uh, obviously, Coach, we're going to try to put the best 11 guys that we got on the field uh, based on what we're seeing. Uh, a lot of times, you know, depending upon the personnel grouping that we're in, based on what they're in, uh, if we want a bigger guy at the point of attack that's a little more physical or better cover guy. But I think that's the best thing about Malachi, you know, our branch is both of them started games here, played a lot of football, uh, have been productive. They understand the defense. So uh, either one of those guys in there, you know, I think we're in pretty good shape and, and they've been moving around. You know, they play safety, uh, play star, branch played a little bit of corner. So we've had to move them around a little bit because of some injuries. So uh, those guys are plug and play guys and they know all five spots in the back end and they give us our best chance to win. So either one of those guys that are in, we, we feel like we're in pretty good shape. Uh, we look in both the starters and based on the personnel group and we're in and what they're doing of, you know, who you kind of go with that week. All right, next will be Zachary Braziller. Zachary. Hey, Coach, um, I just want to your thoughts. I mean, where would you put Will Anderson among players you've coached and just what makes him so difficult to block? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we kind of talked about this last week. I mean, um, he just loves football. I mean, he's you know, all the intangibles you talk about being tough and competitive and, and, and all those things. And then you throw on top of it, you know, the way he prepares, the way he's in here all the time with Coach Sal and watching tape and his love of the game. And then you throw on top of that his size and athletic ability. Um, he, he's one of the heavier handed guys at his size for an outside linebacker that I've been able to be around, you know, as far as striking blocks. Uh, and recreating the line of scrimmage. Uh, so that gives us the flexibility to, to, you know, leave him in the game in a lot of situations and move him around, you know, whether he's a three, a four, a five, a nine. Uh, we'll drop him some as well to keep people honest based on sliding to him. Um, so, you know, he's athletic enough to obviously, you know, drop into coverage, you know, more zone standpoint. Uh, obviously, he's an elite pass rusher, you know, but I think one of his best traits is, you know, how physically he is at the point of attack and knocking guys back and be able to play the run. And I think, you know, everybody from a draft standpoint are looking for guys that specialize in certain things. And I think he's got, you know, all the tools that you're looking for uh, from an every down standpoint. So you throw 
throw that on top of who he is uh, as a person, uh, his character, uh, his want to, uh, and his leadership ability, he's, he's as special as I've been around. Next will be Dennis Dodd. Dennis? Yeah, Pete, following up on that, um, what, what did you mean exactly by a heavy-handed guy? And given all his traits and what he does so well, how many of the guys like him are there in the country or that you've been around or seen in the college game? Yeah, heavy-handed, I'm talking about when you go to strike a block and they're coming off the ball and I go to use my hands and five points of contact to strike him and knock him back. Um, you know, he's so explosive from his legs, from his hips to his hands to be able to create separation and then disengage and get off of guys and go make plays. Uh, so what I mean by that, I mean, he strikes and gets their head going back and then he separates and he can go make the play. A lot of people aren't like that. You know, a lot of people are flesh magnets. They get into a guy and they can't get off or they can't create the separation because they can't come out of their hips. You know, and then on top of that, normally the guys that can do it on a base down from a run standpoint aren't elite pass rushers. And you're taking them off the field on third down, not trying to find ways to get them one on one on their worst guy like we're trying to do with him. Um, so from that aspect, that's what I mean by heavy handed. What, what was the second part of the question? Uh, How many guys are like him in the country? I, I have no idea. Uh, I would see NFL scouts is what they do for a living. I don't watch other teams. Um, I know he won, what, Defensive Player of the Year in the country, so somebody thinks he's the best player in the country, so I have no idea. Thank you. Next question will be from Haley Sutton. Haley, you're up. There we go. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Sorry, I was having issues with okay. the mic there. Um, when you go into a game like this where it's a rematch, not just from the regular season, but the SEC championship, uh, what challenges do you face when you're going into a rematch like this game? Well, I, mean, I think anytime you're, you're playing anybody, regardless, I, mean, I think you go back and look what you did the previous game. And, you know, what are things that we didn't do well that they took advantage of that, you know, we got to find answers for, that we got to correct and that we got to improve on. And then there are some things in games that you don't see to the naked eye and you come out of there and it wasn't an explosive play or it wasn't a long run, but it could have been because we weren't in the right gap or we didn't play the right technique or what have you. So I think it's evaluating the tape and what it do we do well, all right? How can we do the same thing, make it look different to keep it the same for our kids? And then things that we didn't do well, all right, well, what do we need to change? Or is it a technique piece? Is it a scheme piece? Is it a personnel issue um, that you know they're going to come back and try to exploit? And, and then on top of that, I mean, that goes over an entire season. I mean, I think it's a little easier for a semifinal game when you have more time to go through and find issues that, you know, people are having problems with or things that they do well that you want to try to take away um, but it's it's going throughout the years like all right what have we not done well what have we put on tape that have been issues that have created explosive plays whether it's on the run game or the pass game uh, that we got to clean up and then obviously you know the things that you do well uh, you continue to do and then add some mixtures in there to try to make them look the same but it's a little different variation to give a different read uh, whether it's in the run game or the pass game. But um, obviously in any offense or defense, you have a philosophy and this is your defensive scheme. This is your offensive scheme. And you got to go back to what's your bread and butter and what got you there. And at the end of the day, it's about getting off blocks, uh, tackling the guy with the ball in space, uh, defending the deep part of the field, playing penalty free. Um, I mean, it's a, that's football. Uh, so you can't get caught up in changing who you are and what you do just because you played somebody a second time. And now you're putting kids in situations they've never been in for 14 football games that got you there. And now you're getting away from that. So I think there's a fine line in all that. You know, the good piece about being here, coach has been here a lot uh, in these situations. And so, you know, we know where philosophy, we know what we believe in. Uh, it's about execution uh, and getting everybody on the same page and playing fast. All right, our next question will be from Christopher Heidel. Christopher, you're up. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, congratulations on making it to the uh, championship game. Um, the running back for Georgia, James Cook, um, what did you guys have to do to contain him? I know you did a great job against Cincinnati keeping that running game from um, being explosives. What do you have to do to keep that guy from uh, doing what he did to Michigan? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, gap control up front, um, I think is a big piece of that, you know, trying to reestablish the line of scrimmage, not get a lot of movement. Uh, they're very multiple in the run game, both zone and gap. 
Uh, so being gap sound at the second level uh, and taking guys off of double teams and uh, work some slider and some counter game to, you know, fit in your eight man space and right and playing to your help. Uh, you know, a lot of, the, you know, their shot plays and their priority passing game uh, come off the run plays. Um, so they challenge you from an eye control standpoint. It's going to look like run and I got to see my secondary key because it's going to be the same look. And then now here's the shot play off of it. Um, so they do a really good job. You know, Coach Monk's a great coach um, offensively. You know, they, they, they use the horizontal width of the field. They're going to stretch you vertically. Uh, they're going to make you account for all gaps. They got those three big tight ends that they're going to put on the field a lot, a lot at the same time uh, to create extra gaps. Uh, and they're good pass catchers. And then you can't forget about, obviously, these backs and the run game. That's one thing. And you got to gang tackle and you got to pepper the ball. Uh, and we got to get there, especially in space. I think four special in space. Uh, that showed up, you know, a couple of times last, you know, last time we played these guys. Uh, some explosive plays based on missed tackles that he created. Um, but, you know, you got to be sound. I mean, I think obviously you got to be able to try to take the run game away. I think that's hard to do versus these guys. Uh, but you got to eliminate the explosives. Uh, you got to make them drive the field. We got to create some turnovers. Uh, we got to play really well, you know, critical situations in the game, uh, being third down, which was a big piece of this game last time, and then win the turnover battle. Uh, I think that was a big piece of this game, uh, you know, last time as well with the, with the interception. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to be sound versus the run, but they're very multiple um, to where once you devote yourself to the run, they can make you pay on the perimeter as well. So it's a great challenge. Great. Thank you very much, Coach. We appreciate your time here this afternoon.